you know that feeling when you get home late at night and although you you are very tired you had a rough day you're still very energized you still want to learn something else you want to read something that interests you uh, you still want to do something for your career that's what michael gladwell calls meaningful work in his book outliers he mentions three characteristics that work has to have to be considered meaningful you have to have autonomy you have to be able to make your own choices the second thing is that it has to be complex work needs to be complex because uh, you need to be always learning new things and also you have to have some direct connection between effort and rewards the more effort you put into the work the more rewards you get be it financial or satisfaction or you know results whatever it is and software development is a classic example of meaningful work not only it's meaningful, but it's very, very creative work. We can work remotely and work for anyone. We can actually work in all kinds of different projects from small devices to big uh, uh, servers. Uh, we can work on all kinds of knowledge fields, right? We can work on, on medicine, on biology. Uh, we can work in engineering, in the industry, in service. We can work for anyone. Everything has software in it. Now, for us to actually benefit from this, we need to be always improving our career. We need to be always looking for ways that our career doesn't, doesn't get stale. My name is Bruno Souza and I'm known as the Brazilian Java Man. To got my career, I have always investing in and figure out ways to help developers be the best developers that you deserve to be. In this series of videos here, Code for Life, we're going to talk with several developers, you know, Java champions, open source developers, JCP spec leads, speakers in conferences, JCP members. We're going to talk with, with people that have done cool stuff in their careers to help you figure out things that you can do to improve your career. We're going to get their ideas, the things that they did, so you can also replicate that and you can get an amazing developer career. So today, we're going to start talking with Andres Almire and Ixchel Ruiz. Andres is a JCP spec lead, a Java champion, and Ixchel, uh, she handles the Hacker Garden, uh, an effort from the JCP to, inside events, uh, get developers to participate more in the community. So let's see what the, they have to say. Because I think that software development is a creative process. Uh, we are in a very, very interesting industry. Uh, that changes yes, a lot. That all changes a lot all the time. And but a, a lot of times you see people that that are in this industry, but they're stuck, right? You know their careers don't advance. Uh, they, they you know they don't get interesting projects. They kind of get stuck in these old technologies. What what can we tell the uh, tell developers in general that they can do to improve their careers? Let me to, uh, tell you about another friend. He's Australian mm -hmm. and he he was also very into the Ruby community. And he used to say, usually I don't have a lot of time. But then I wake up from 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. And then is that was the time he he used to do to interact with the Groovy community. Mm -hmm. And he said, that's for me the time when I instead of go and paint with the large brush, mm -hmm. it's with the pencil. So that's where he was creative, he was expressive, he was uh, doing something amazing. So for me, my first mm -hmm. uh, advice is, okay, you can create um, a new project, your pet store, write it in several languages, use several frameworks, try new things. But my personal suggestion is, instead of doing this, it's go to an open source uh, project, go to a very large community. From personal experience, I will recommend Groovy. Another really good community is JRuby because we, we had the chance to talk a lot with Charles and Charles Nutter is really embracing. He, he, he is one of yeah. those people that really want you to come and learn and, and discuss. And for me, that's the right place to start learning about something with people that it's very knowledgeable and passionate and open. 
Yes, def cool. definitely get involved in, in an open source project uh, will be my, my recommendation. And you can get involved in many different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, the easiest one is you're using a particular project, you find a problem, submit a bug report. That's the easiest one that anybody can use. Just get interested that you, you, you find it. Yeah, no, no. But the first thing is you find an obstacle and instead of just saying, eh, I'll add my work around and then continue, it's just let the other people know, by the way, I was able to encounter this problem. Here are the steps. And if you are able to fix it, then it will be great if you submit a patch. That is the best thing that you can do. And that's how it gets the, the ball rolling. Uh, some people get so excited that their contribution was accepted that they might want to fix one of the open tickets or they encounter another problem and then continue fixing it. And it's, in, it's a little bit addictive, but in a very good way. Once you continue to go down this path, you start to learn coding tricks from the other team members. You discover that they are, they're probably living at the other side of the world. They have a different way to solve and see problems. So you also uh, gain that knowledge and you can contribute your knowledge because you also solve problems in a different way. So it, it starts a discussion going back and forth. If this is the best way, the most performant, and then you learn new tricks, you learn new tools, you eventually might discover a new language, and then you don't know exactly where you're going to end up. It's just the first step out of the, of the incredible journey. Another mm -hmm. side effect is that you're building your CV. You're not writing it mm -hmm. or building it. Now, if if you go to an interview and you said, I, I do testing, and you said, well, you can visit my GitHub account and they will see that you really do testing right. or that you really do uh, know what you're saying you do. And another thing that I have uh, I encountered in the, during the Hacker Gardens is people are sometimes working for these big companies that fork one technology like 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So when you go and, ah, do you know this com Git common? And they say, I have never ever used Git mm -hmm. because in my company, we don't use it. Right. And, and they say, well, then I'm stuck there because I don't know what's outside. So I'm, I really don't know how to change work because I know that my company is using a stack very, I mean, they, they yeah. feel like. We have encountered customers that still use <laughs> their own custom version of struts. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, yes. You say you say this like we haven't encountered like it's one. Right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you decided to use struts at some point in your, in your project, right? And then you know, I don't know. Ten years later, that project still works. Yeah, are you just gonna change the whole thing just to change it for for a new framework? So you just kind of keep that thing, right? Did you develop right? in, in JavaScript and HTML? It doesn't happen, right? Yeah, it doesn't yes. happen. That's one of the things. Yeah, we were discussing this with Michael yesterday because because he was saying that uh, backwards compatibility is so important because actually some projects that they have a long life, right? And it's not bad that you have those other things, but the thing is for your career, sometimes it's good that you can see other things also, right? Yes, and you can. When when we talk about Hacker Garden, we all, all usually also point that if you have an open source project, you can get some. IDEs license for free. Mm -hmm. You can have, um, yeah. yes, that's, that's, that's important. No, IDE yes. licenses three shares of, of, yes, three shares of pro profiling tools Profile and also tools, tools and that your company might not want to pay at first. But once you get the experience working these tools, you may be in a better position to convince yes. your manager to acquire the tools you for the company. You already know how to use them. They won't appear in your, you, you don't have to wait until, Guess what? We're going to use SAS labs now. And you're like, what? <laughs> now, if you have your open source project, maybe you're involved. They have a license open for open source project. So for you, it's like, oh, great. I know that tool. Right. So, OK, so, so now uh, when someone comes to you like this and, and you know, they have never uh, 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 worked on an open source project, they, they, uh, you know, they are using old technology. Uh, and then you come to them and say, okay, so you go and you, you join an open source project and you contribute to an open source project. Isn't this scary? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, it, it, so, yes. so how, how do you, into a right, so, so how, how do you, how do you get from 
it's scary to actually want to do it, right? So in the hacker garden, you don't know how many people have done their first commit or create their GitHub account. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, this happened two years ago in the first hacker garden in Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a J Magreb. Now it's known as DevOps Morocco. Uh, we announced it. We, we, we announced the hacker garden, and then uh, some people showed up. And then we said, okay, so here are some of the ideas of the stuff that we want to work on. Uh, does somebody know Gradle? Nothing. No. Does somebody know Git? Nothing. No. Ah, kind of. Uh, okay, so what ended up happening is that these people had not created a GitHub account. Right. So we ended up showing, oh, this is how you do it, and this is how you commit, and this is how you. And then, so we ended up hacking for four hours, and they were very happy because they learned something. They actually learned a few things. But they also contributed to an open source project and they saw, wow, this is easy it's as a matter so of fact. Easy. It's not so different from what I usually do in my work. It's just that you are talking to more people, you are caring about uh, the, um, the the code quality or the uh, structure that the other the members of the team will look like, right? right. So uh, when they saw that it was relatively easy, they said, yes, let's continue to do this. Okay. For me, that's one of the most rewarding experiences in a hacker garden. See people doing their first push. So I start with you. I'm going to end with you. Okay. Right? Perfect. Okay. So if you so had one. Yeah, yeah, I have. Hmm? <laughs> no, she I, has two. I one. get time to think. She has time to think. Yes. Right? So if you had uh, to give one suggestion to someone who's watching us, someone who's going to watch us later, on one thing that he, could, that he or she could do to, uh, to improve his career something that happened to you in the past maybe that like this one thing completely changed your life because you did that what would that be the thing that started the ball rolling for me to contribute to open source was taking in a course on testing with tdd okay interesting so i would say always have a lookout for testing uh, no not testing for for training opportunities whether it's inside a conference, it's a mm -hmm. workshop, it's an online seminar, there are many ways. But it's very likely that the, of the many things that you learn mm -hmm. in this particular course, something has to do with open source. Right. And that, for some reason, resonated a, lo a lot with me. And I kid you not, it was three weeks after I took this course that my first contribution to open source was made. Pretty cool. Yeah. Nice. Nice. How about you? What, what, what was it like? The 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 one thing you did in your career that's like, whoa, this really changed it. Yes, and that will be attending. If you attend a conference, mm -hmm. have the chance, really have the chance, give you the chance to network with um, project leaders, people that are actually be actively working on whatever is your topic of choice. Let me follow that up. If you ever go to a conference and you have a question, don't let that question go unanswered. Either ask it right away or at the end of the session or approach the speaker and ask your question. Trust me, this is one of the best things that you can do. Yes. So yes, yes. networking. For me, it's networking. Um, meet the people uh, behind the technology. Right, so you seem to be, you know, since since I've met you, you seem to be like, you know, a person that's very easy to talk with other people, you're very outspoken, and, you know, uh, and I realize that sometimes, I'm not sure how you, how you, how you are in your you know, day to day life. And I know a lot of people are different in conference than, than they are. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm very, very shy in conference. I'm not so much, but uh, in my okay, day life, right. I'm very shy. Uh -huh. But a lot of times when you say, you know, go networking, go meet people, go do these, these things. We're talking here for a group, you know, that we call ourselves nerds, right? Yes, I know. For a reason, right? We don't like to go talk we, to people. We, we, right? we interact so, with the computer because yes, it's face easier. to face is right. not that simple. So so you know, since you're you have, you know, you seem to have like a much I better guess than we have than we no, have. No, no, no. Right? Let me tell what you do you suggest to what that, that I, we should do? I always answer that because mm -hmm. the people think that I'm very open and which it's sometimes the case okay All but right. i always tell them i i went into computers because i'm not so good with people soft skills mm -hmm. nor my for them right but anyway you have to push yourself you have to jump into the water mm -hmm. it's now or never all right 
Okay, guys, so <laughs> with this final message, it's now or never, and I think this is really, really true. You know, our careers are completely our responsibility. As, you know, as developers, we can't outsource the responsibility in our communities, in our careers. It's very normal that we say, oh, you know, I, I, I went to a conference because my wife suggested that I should go, or I did this training because my boss put me to do this training. I learned this technology because my teacher told me that I had to learn. We outsource our career on the decision of someone else. And it's really, really important that we took, of course, we can take all this advice from good people around us. That's always good. But it's really, it's really important that we take responsibility on improving our own careers. So get involved with open source, do networking, participate in events, join the Hacker Garden, all cool ideas for you to do all those things. Of course, when you, if, you, if you're able to have someone like Ixchel walk you through uh, your first contribution, for example, things are a lot easier. So every time you associate with people that are doing good things in their careers, people that are, that are somewhat, somewhat better than you are, we improve, we get better, we get better, we become better developers. A good way to do this is if you go to projects where those people are. So every time you join an open source project, that's a great way to do this. But Andres is a spec lead at the JCP, the Java Community Process. Ixchel runs the Hacker Garden that is an initiative to get people to participate on JCP initiatives. You can also join and participate on the JCP in a very, very easy way. It's totally free. So that's a very, very good way for you to find people like Andres and Ixchel and many, many others to actually get your career moving. Let's do it. Let's jump in the water. Let's take responsibility for our careers and let's keep moving forward.